Hi, my name is Katja and today I will speak about um, style uh, reflected in online Dutch book reviews. Uh, why so? Why style uh, in online book reviews? Uh, the fact is that we um, often investigate style um, as a component of the text. So we uh, search for um, specific uh, stylistic features, we describe these features, we compare these features uh, in one book and another. Uh, but it's uh, also interesting to see which effects style has on the readers. And um, that is that can be reflected in uh, online reviews. So the main goal of my investigation is to create a tentative uh, understanding of how style is uh, percepted and conceptualized by readers um, in the context of online book reviews. It's important to say that I'm aware of the fact that um, the online book reviews do not represent all the readers, but um, the perception of style in there can help to gauge uh, the book perception in terms of style. Uh, and that can reveal uh, some differences between genres, be between uh, different authors, between genders of the readers and genders of the authors, um, between uh, books which are translated into Dutch and originally uh, written in uh, this language. And um, the results of this study uh, can be uh, implemented in a larger existing impact model. Um, uh, so I'm now contributing to smaller and more clearly defined impact categories. Um, to achieve my, my goal, uh, my aim, um, I used, I've used the uh, corpus of Dutch online book reviews, um, um, online Dutch book response of the bear um, and it contains more than 300,000 reviews uh, totaling um, uh, 45 million words um, and I'm uh, assessing that um, through Black Lab. Um, using this corpus I wanted to get answers to the main questions which are you see on the slide so I wanted to know what is the quantitative uh, representation of style in reviews, so how often is a style is mentioned, um, and in which terms it is evaluated by the readers, so which words they uh, use to detect the style, and uh, which characteristics of style are mentioned in uh, the reviews. Um, first of all, um, um, it was um, important to answer the uh, quantitative question. So I um, wanted to um, uh, to know how often style is mentioned in online book reviews. Therefore, I've used two uh, random sets of um, online reviews. I've annotated them. First, the uh, only the uh, 200, and then 500 reviews, including the first 200. And um, it turns out that a style is mentioned in uh, uh, more than 40% of uh, all the reviews. Um, um, it's a large proportion. Uh, my intuition said that it would be less, uh, but uh, I'm happy to see this uh, these uh, numbers. And um, um, it style turns out to be an important an, an important uh, part of the review in addition to its qualitative importance of course um so uh, to count um, the proportion of style in the reviews i've annotated them focusing on style um i've i've read 500 reviews and i've annotated uh, where the style was mentioned um after that, uh, I've looked at the keywords uh, in the sentences, which I've annotated uh, as uh, sentences about style, and I took the most used nouns, uh, and it became style, language, tone, word, sentence, and expression. Uh, using Black Lab still, uh, I've searched for adjective noun combinations because, because uh, nouns are mostly characterized by adjectives. Um, 
And uh, as a result, I've got six lists of such combinations, adjective plus noun. Uh, so each list for each noun, six nouns. Um, and then I've tagged the, uh, uh, the combinations. Um, so the text were, were data driven and um, from this text, I formed the categories for the style uh, model. But before um, I move to um, further description of uh, my categories, I want to say um, uh, how this implements in the existing impact model. Um, um, left on the side, you see the impact model uh, of Koopman and Hackenmulder. Uh, uh, there are just two cat big categories, ge general feeling or gen general affective feeling and reflection. And within general affective feeling, we have stylistic and narrative feeling. But already in 2022, um, both Cole and Mögarten uh, have expanded the model with uh, humor, attention, surprise uh, and negative effect. And um, um, in such a manner, the model became more detailed, defined. Um, and uh, the authors of the later model uh, write that smaller and more clearly defined impact categories might be better suited for validation and survey. So, however, the style feeling is not yet clearly defined and has no subcategories. This research can be the first step to more detailed and thus investigatable definition of style feeling. Um, I'll say more about that at the end of the presentation as well. Um, so um, now we can go back to the categories. Um, so back to categories. Um, on the next slide here, you can see the categories on the left side. Uh, all the uh, categories I've created by tagging the combinations. Um, and there are a lot of them, uh, among others, uh, qualitative and quantitative evaluation. Um, uh, the most important, for, uh, on my opinion, reader experience, but also such categories as features of the text. So. Um, um, there are some uh, examples uh, further, uh, but also author, region, and time. Um, and uh, this is also an example of definition of style as a noun, not as a concept we uh, try to reconstruct. Uh, the characterization of style as a noun within this um, uh, model. And you can see that um, uh, people write about the style that it can be poetic, literary, or beautiful, or uh, readable. Um, the author can have his or her own style. Uh, it can the the characterizations can refer to region or time. But it's interesting to see here also that the quantitative evaluation of style is not represented at all. So you cannot count the noun style. But let's take a look at an, uh, another noun word. It's more concrete than style. Um, and uh, we can see also that it is, if we speak about categories, it's much more countable than style. We see some um, adjective there. Um, uh, there are um, many words or five, six words or too many words as well. Um, and um, if we take a look at the categories in uh, in uh, in general uh, uh, on my opinion the most important category is reader experience and um, it is uh, always the most presented category uh, of response on style uh, on any uh, any noun um, it's also very metaphorical in a sense of perception um, of style as a concept um, you can see some examples for the noun word here, but to name a few more examples, um, uh, words can be also expensive or hard or even toxic. Um, the readers speak about vital, crooked and catchy expressions or aggressive and expressive language. Um, and we, we will see that on the next slide as well. And um, 
these adjectives fall into the category with their experience, which differs, from, uh, for example, from the more common evaluation uh, in terms of qualitative evaluation, which includes such characteristics as good, nice, beautiful, and so on, and sometimes bad or awful as well. Um, so the qualitative evaluation is much more simple, so to say, uh, than reader experience. So on this slide, we have some more examples. I've said already something about reader experience and qualitative evaluation, but people in online book reviews mention uh, features of the text as well. So um, we can speak about the last or the first word or short or long sentences, for example. Uh, period of time, region and author are also mentioned a lot. Um, uh, but there are also references to, for example, literary movements or a well-known text or book, uh, as well as some uh, particular professional field. And these references are included in the other references category. So having this, all these categories uh, is already very interesting, but it was more interesting for me to see how different com components of style as a concept are represented in the reviews and whether there are differences and sim or similarities maybe between uh, the uh, reactions on, the, on each noun uh, uh, in terms of categorizations. And um, um, therefore, uh, I've calculated a percentage of, for each noun, uh, for each category, uh, because the number of tokens vary per noun, and got this table. Um, it's, um, it's rather difficult to see some uh, um, dependencies here, so we can look at the next uh, slide with the heat map. So this is the heat map based on the table we have just seen. It's uh, unfortunately not even, um, or maybe luckily not even, um, but it's um, there are some interesting things to mention. Um, among relevant nouns, uh, just the same six nouns uh, I've mentioned before, they are written in Dutch here, uh, but we can distinguish uh, more concrete nouns, uh, like word, sentence, and expression, and more abstract ones, uh, like style, tone, and language. Um, and my expectation would be that the more abstract the concept is, uh, the more um, um, reader experience associations it would evoke. Um, so more metaphorical associations. Um, but the empirical research uh, contradicts this expectation. And um, however, most of the associations in the reader's experience category are associated still with the words language and tone, which are rather abstract. Uh, while such associations with such associations with style are almost at least frequent here. And um, there are some uh, uh, some interesting things as well. Um, the noun style is most closely related to the author and the quant quant qu sorry qualitative evaluation. So good or bad, and his or her style. Um, while qualitative evaluation is also linked to the notion of sentence, style is abstract sentences uh, rather uh, concrete. And a sentence is also defined by the structure of the text, which is not surprising. Uh, good or bad sentences, um, and uh, yeah, long or short, so to say. Uh, it's uh, still interesting to look at a sentence more closely and to see the difference between sentence and word, for example, uh, which are two concrete nouns. Um, uh, but while word is, besides the quantitative uh, characteristics, is related to time, region, and um, evokes associations in the category of reader's experience. Sentences evoke less associations, less metaphorical associations, and they are rela related to the features of uh, the text. So long or short sentences and qualitative evaluation. Still, they are like uh, close to each other. They are abs not abstract, but concrete but they evoke different um, characteristics. Uh, we have spoken so um, 
about the categories and each category uh, separately, but it's now uh, time to look at the uh, perception of style as a com complex construct. And if we we'll have this great view um, across all the investigated uh, adjective noun combinations, um, it turns out that style is most often evaluated in terms of difficulty. So people write about uh, difficult, easy, readable, unreadable um, language words, style. And we also note uh, that um, style is also characterized by the words like familiar or unfamiliar. Um, and um, also less than the first two, um, uh, two notions, but style is also um, uh, talked about uh, in terms of physical objects. So you can uh, read about soft style, uh, fuzzy words, empty words, or raw language, spicy language, and so on. Uh, we also found differences between perceptions of different features of style. Uh, for example, words are perceived to be emotional, you can read about funny words, evil words, um, untouchable words. Um, and language evokes, for example, special associations. We can read about direct language, uh, just to give um, an example. And this all gives us a tentative impression of the impact of style um, and uh, characterizations of style and makes a contribution to the ongoing empirical literary studies. The follow-up to this work would be an investigation to the texts uh, to which readers respond to as to difficult or not difficult, familiar or not familiar, uh, following the traditions of foregrounding uh, studies. But still, the overwhelming occurrence of such reactions as good, bad, di difficult, readable or correct style evokes some theoretical questions. So these theoretical issues can be our prospects, um, can, um, can be the basic for the further research. Uh, but if we see how people react to style and we see the overwhelming reactions uh, um, in terms of difficulty, for example, uh, we can uh, think about two layers of impact. Um, uh, so impact or and enjoyment. And uh, on the impact impact level, uh, fiction has the power to shape um, our beliefs, our attitudes, our behavior. It can provide insights um, into the human uh, condition, challenge uh, social norms, uh, provoke critical thinking, and so on. Uh, additionally, it can uh, also foster empathy and understanding by allowing readers um, to experience different perspectives and cultures. But on the enjoyment level, uh, fiction offers entertainment, escapism, and um, gives you the opportunity to explore imaginative words. So therefore, the term enjoyment occurs more often in the studies of absorption, for example, uh, while the studies on the effects of foregrounding um, use uh, more often the term um, impact. Um, the question is, uh, when we see their reactions on style uh, in the online book reviews, are these reactions given on the level of impact or on the level of enjoyment? And therefore, uh, regarding this, we could ask ourselves if there should be two models in, instead of one. A model of enjoyment on the one hand and uh, an impact model on the other hand. Um, or maybe we can expand the impact model with enjoyment, in, including enjoyment uh, element in it. Uh, for example, as a subcategory of positive effect, maybe. Uh, besides looking at um, the reactions on style in the reviews, we could assume that re the reactions of enjoyment can be found easily in the text of reviews or in the text um, of online reviews um, because they are traceable on the word level, while the deeper stylistic impact um, 
impact of literature, of course, uh, should be searched somewhere, somewhere else, maybe. Uh, for example, in the stylistic changes uh, in the text of review, which reacts on the text of book and reflects the style of the book in the review, just to name an example of this. Um, but maybe uh, it, it should be investigated more. Uh, for now, I'm, uh, I've said everything. Thanks for your attention.